our walk in the woodland this time we're going to use our home field clearing so this is lovely with the trees as a frame and as we were saying on the shows when we did this so I've got this one here cut out of the charisma looks absolutely amazing cut out of the charisma but if you were to cut that out of white and put it over a blue background it'd be very Christmassy you could even put the deer and the fawn in there and it'd look really Christmassy if you were to cut it out of black it's Halloween what different ways to do it now cut it out of this and then just cover it with leaves then you've got spring summer it's really really versatile i think you're going to find it a really really useful die set now to cut this i've used the inner die and the outer frame die that come separate so i'll show you these two because i've got them here so you've got the inner die which has no cutting blade and then the outer one and that fits perfectly on the charisma to create that image but what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to use that outer die I'm going to take a piece of brown cardstock and I'm going to put the frame die in the center of that without as I said without the outside die and what that's going to do is it's going to give me a much bigger border around the edge so we can pop that on just there that's not very straight is it let's try and least appear to go straight so I'm, I'm going to tape down in the center because this piece is my waist so it's not going to um, catch pop this on so that is out of the cardstock from the collection from this collection so it's a lovely brown cardstock so that's going to go through oh, slowing down as it goes through chug chug so while that's going through let me show you what I would do with my card base so I've got my card base and I do like to do a lot of these cards tent fold. I just find that they stand up better as long as you've got a good sturdy um, card base. So we can then add on to that, let's get it the right way around. We've got our green card stuck and that's from the collection and then one of the scenes from the USB. The paper scenes are absolutely amazing on the USB. Now I have put tape down all four sides because this is quite a big card. Now the scene that I've used isn't the one from the folder called Home Field Clearing because they are exactly the same size as the frame. They've been resized. I want it to be bigger than the frame so I've used one of the A4 backgrounds and I've just trimmed it down a little bit so can you see on there now maybe you're going to be stamping a sentiment on here um, or maybe you're going to put your sentiment on separately or maybe you want a card without a sentiment it's entirely up to you so we can pop this onto here there we go now look at this so you can see straight away how the greens pick up all the greens in the cut in the image really beautiful so let's pick up this frame that we've just cut there we go there we are I think all the bits are popped out now that is going to go on here and can you see how we've now got a bigger frame around the outside but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take one of the charisma and pop it like that what you could do we're not going to do it on this one but what you could do is you could always do it as a very slight drop shadow just like that that looks really really nice so I've got one here where I've already put some tape on the back so we can pop that onto oops our card base and we're really going to add quite a bit of dimension in here so we've got this one first now I'm not put tape too low down at the bottom and I've done that quite deliberately because I want to do my composition um, in there so with the composition what I tend to do is when I get these collections I cut everything out first and then I just have a whole box of all the die cuts and then I'll create something like this frame oh taking that one off and then I will just play around with all of the die cuts until I find one the, the, the layout that I really like so I keep touching it to see which pieces have got the backing off and which haven't there we go into the bin and that's now going to go onto my card base. So what this done has done is it's given me a foundation for my frame, but it's also given me a built-in border. So I'm going to take my frame, no tape or anything on the back, and we're just going to put this onto the card base. And as I said, this one, we're not going to create a drop shadow, but that could be an option that you might want to consider. 
There we go, let's put some glue all the way down there, all the way down, and that's going to go just down here. There we go, and that's going to go on there. So like I say, we're not creating a drop shadow, so let's line this up perfectly. That's the joy of my wet glue, is it gives me that wiggle time to get everything perfectly lined up. Doesn't that look lovely? Straight away now, can you see how, I'm going to turn that around so you can see, how we've created dimension and depth. So it actually looks like you could step through there. Now we're going to make even more dimension because what I've done is I've cut it out again and I've put it onto foam pads. So again, can you see how we're now really giving you a way into this project? It's very Hansel and Gretel, isn't it? You can just imagine a trail of breadcrumbs, a breadcrumb path leading back. Turn the corner and there's a little cottage. I don't know, you fantasize. But I think this collection is, it made me reminisce a lot when I was um, using it. Um, made me think about places that I'd been as an adult, but a lot as a child. A um, lot of time I used to spend down at my grandparents' house which was out in the country. It's going to give everybody different feelings, but I know when I talk to the presenters that were presenting these shows with me, they, it all, each one of them, it conjured up a memory or a feeling. So I've got a three inch, a three inch, three millimeter even um, foam on here. So it's going to raise it up quite nicely for me. There we go. There isn't a right and a wrong size foam tape. You just use whatever you've got, or you can just use foam pads. And that now is going to go just on there. So I'm just going to lean over just ever so slightly so that I line it up properly. And again, if you wanted to, you could create a drop shadow, but we're going to line that up perfectly. So there we go. Look at that. You really feel like you've, set, you've created a stage, haven't you? So this is almost like the stage scene of the wings, and you could walk into there. Now let me show you. We can then put our deer and our fawn in there. Look at that. So straight away you know you've got dimension, haven't you? You've got them, the depth. But if we didn't want to use the fawn, we could use the bunnies. And don't, don't the colours match up really well? I say bunnies, they're actually hares. So you could create dimension like that. I like the deer for this one. I think that's what we're going to use. But you can just work around and work out which one you like. So that's going to go just in there. Then it's about building up the scenes. Now these catkins were absolutely amazing and I couldn't believe how few people knew what a catkin was when we were doing them on the show. All of our young floor managers, not one of them, knew what a catkin was. There we go. How about that? Now straight away can you see that is again added that dimension. I'm going to put that up in that corner then down in this corner I'm going to put some of the Veronica which is absolutely beautiful. So put two down there and I'm going to put a third one. Let me lift that on. Third one a bit higher. There we go. And the other thing I'm going to do to add dimension is I'm going to get a couple of the pheasant feathers. And we're just going to add those in at the back just to add a little bit more structure and a little bit more texture. What else have I got? Oh, I've got the privet berries here and we can tuck the privet berries in there. Now straight away, can you see how everything is starting to come together with dimension? Then we've got lots of little bits here that I've got left over from, oops, from other projects. So we can then just slot these, if we can get that in, slot these in here, just so that we've got that little pop of red if that's what you want. And we can just pop them in that doesn't want to sit there very well does it pop those into there just so you've got that little hint of detail there we go now what else could i do the other thing i quite like doing is getting some of the other branches that could sit that way so you could create a scene so you've got the deer just hiding in that little snicket or you can pop it down there to create um sort of a fallen tree that they're just resting behind. But whichever way you do it, how about that? Oh, I've also got some foliage here, which I quite like putting down at the bottom. 
to cover up all the workings. How about that? Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? And doesn't it create a lot of depth and dimension?